In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use Agno Workflows feature to create, manage, and execute powerful automated processes that streamline your tests. Agno Workflows is uh, one of the features designed to orchestrate complex tasks by connecting AI agents, tools, and data sources in a single process pipeline. You can think of a workflow as a dynamic blueprint that defines how various components interact to achieve a specific goal, seamlessly managing data flow and task execution. By using Agno workflows, we can automate repetitive processes, integrate external APIs, manage data storage, and even personalize user interactions. This is going to be an advanced tutorial, so in terms of the prerequisites, it is highly recommended that you have decent Python experience, especially working with classes and object-oriented programming. Additionally, prior experience building agents within the Agno framework is required, as it provides the foundational knowledge needed to understand agent configurations, tool integrations, and task processing within workflows. To really learn how to use the Agno Workflows feature, we will be building a blog post generator app that automates the entire process of researching a topic and creating a professional quality blog post. The example will consist of two key agents, one that searches the web for the top articles related to the given topic using DuckDuckGo, and another that analyzes those articles to generate a well-structured, engaging blog post. The workflow handles tasks like caching previous results to improve efficiency, retrying searches when needed, and maintaining session states for seamless execution. Here's a diagram to illustrate the blog post generator workflow. We start out by giving a topic for the blog post. Then check if a blog post for that topic is already available. If yes, retrieve the blog post and display the content. If blog post topic is not already available, the article searcher agent will use DuckDuckGo to search for relevant articles. If no articles are found, end the workflow with a message, no articles found. Otherwise, pass the articles to the writer agent to generate a blog post and add the blog post to cache storage. Here's a demo using Agno Playground to run the workflow example we will be building in this tutorial. In the topic field, give a topic, then turn off use cache to ensure new block is generated every time workflow is executed. Click run workflow to trigger the block generation. Just like that, you have generated a blog post based on a given topic in less than 20 seconds. Now let's look at the steps how a workflow is implemented. To build a workflow in Agno, you'll start by defining your workflow as a class that inherits from the workflow class. This forms the foundation where you can organize your logic and manage the flow of tasks. Next, you'll add one or more agents to the workflow. These agents will handle specific tasks like data retrieval, processing, or content generation. Once your agents are set up, you'll implement the core logic inside the run method. This is where you orchestrate how agents interact, pass data between them, and manage the sequence of operations. To enhance performance, you can cache intermediate results in the session state, which helps avoid redundant processing when the workflow runs multiple times. Finally, to execute the workflow, simply call the run method and your workflow will process the inputs, coordinate the agents, and produce the desired output. And that's the whole workflow concept. Let's learn the workflow implementation in Python, then we will dive into the blog post generator example. Before starting the tutorial, make sure you install Agno and the necessary Python dependencies if you haven't already done so. Launch your code editor and create a blank Python file. Start by importing the workflow class from the Agno framework. This is the base class that all workflows will inherit from. Then define your workflow by creating a new class that inherits from workflow. The class name can be anything descriptive, 
like my first workflow. At this point, the workflow doesn't do anything because there's no logic yet. To make the workflow functional, we need to define what it should do when it runs. That's where the run method comes in. To set up the logic, import the run response class and implement the run method. The run method is the core of your workflow. Think of it as the set of instructions that tell the workflow what to do when it's executed. Inside this method, you'll define the sequence of actions, such as calling agents, processing data, or generating responses. Agno workflows are designed to support streaming outputs, which means the workflow can send results back as they are being processed. To achieve this, instead of using return, you'll use the yield keyword along with run response objects. This allows the workflow to output data in real time step by step. To run the workflow, create an instance of your workflow object and call the run method to execute it. Since the run method returns as a generator, it will loop to the responses to display the output, hello from my workflow. Now, let's move on to the blog post generator example to see how we can apply the workflow structure in a real world scenario. The first step is to define the data structures that will hold the search results. Define the data structures that will hold the search results. We'll use patentic model to create models for the news articles and search results. Import the necessary packages from pedantic and typing to define the data models. To structure the data returned by the search agent, we will create two data classes, news article to hold details such as the title, URL, and an optional summary, and search results to contain a list of these news article items, which will be populated with search results. Next, import the workflow class from the Agno workflow module, then create a class named blog post generator that inherits from workflow. This class acts as the core structure and container where agents and workflow logic reside. To perform specific tasks within the workflow, import the agent class from Agno agent model class to instantiate models and DuckDuckGo tools for web searches. Then instantiate the web search and writer agents with their respective models and instructions in the blog post generator class. For the searcher agent, I will use OpenAI GPT-40 mini model with DuckDuckGo tools to search the article giving a topic, while the writer agent will leverage Google Gemini for content creation based on the search results. Now that the agents are defined, import run response, run event, and iterator to manage the workflow's execution flow. Additionally, import JSON for handling data serialization and logger for logging workflow activities. Then define the run method to handle caching, searching, and writing. In the run method, add two logging statements to keep track of the workflow's execution. These logs are helpful for monitoring the workflow's behavior, especially when debugging or reviewing the process flow. To optimize performance and avoid redundant processing, create a private method called add blog post to cache. In the method, Start by logging that the blog post is being cached for the specified topic. Use set default to ensure the blog post key exists in the session state dictionary, which acts as an in-memory cache. If the key doesn't exist, initialize it as an empty dictionary. Then store the blog post in the cache using the topic as the key. This simple caching mechanism significantly improves performance by eliminating the need to regenerate blog posts for the same topic. Finally, log a success message to confirm that the blog post has been cached successfully. To retrieve cached blog posts when the workflow is set to use the cache, create a private method called getCachedBlogPost. In the getCachedBlogPost method, start by logging that the workflow is checking for a cached blog post related to the specified topic. Attempt to retrieve the cached post from the session state. 
If the blog post is found, Logger Cache hit to confirm that the workflow can reuse the existing content. If no cached post is available, log that no cached version was found. This method helps the workflow return results quickly for topics that have already been processed, reducing both response time and computational load. After setting up caching, the next step is to define how the workflow will search for articles related to the topic. Create a private method called getSearchResults. In the getSearchResult method, start by setting max attempt to 3, which allows the workflow to retry the search operation up to 3 times in case of failures. Then insert the loop to run the search using the searcher agent. If the response is valid, meaning it exists and matches the search results model, log the number of articles found and return the results immediately. If the response is invalid or empty, log a warning and move on to the next attempt. In case of any exceptions, such as network errors, catch them and log the error for visibility. After exhausting all attempts without success, log an error message and return none signaling that the search failed. Now, assuming the articles are successfully retrieved from the getSearchResults method, the next step is to generate the actual blog post. Create a private method called writeBlogPost. To generate the blog post with topic and search results as the parameters. In the writeBlogPost method, start by adding a log entry to indicate that the blog post generation process has begun for the specified topic. Then prepare the writer input dictionary, which includes the topic and a list of articles. Convert each article into a dictionary using model dump to ensure the data is properly structured for the writer agent. To make debugging easier, log the prepared input in JSON format. This helps verify that the data being passed to the agent is accurate. Next. Trigger the content generation using the writer run method. Use yield from because the writer agent streams its output. This allows the workflow to return content incrementally as it's generated, providing a more responsive experience, especially for longer blog posts. Once the content is generated, call the add blog post to cache method to store it ensuring that any previously created blog posts on the topic can be quickly retrieved later without needing to be regenerated. With all the helper methods in place, it's time to complete the run method. This is where everything comes together, orchestrating the entire workflow from start to finish. Start by checking if caching is enabled, then check for a cached blog post. If a cached version exists, Return it immediately and mark the event as workflow completed. If no cached content is found, proceed to call the getSearchResults method to search for relevant articles. If the search is unsuccessful, exit gracefully with a warning message to avoid unnecessary processing. Finally, if articles are found, call the writeBlogPost method to generate the blog post with the writer agent. The content is streamed back in real time. And once the generation is complete, cache the blog post for future use. And that completes the workflow. Now let's test the blog post generator workflow to see everything in action. Insert the main routine as the entry point and import SQLite workflow storage class to handle the storage of workflow sessions, allowing the blog post generator to persist data between runs. In the main routine, prompt the user to enter a blog post topic using the prompt ask method to input the topic on a terminal. Next, create an instance of the blog post generator class. Use the topic to generate a URL safe session ID, which helps organize session data. For the workflow uses SQLite workflow storage class to store the workflow data including session states, cached blog posts, and any intermediate results generated during the blog post creation process. Finally, call the run method to generate the blog post. 
use the use cache parameter to control if new content is generated every time. If use cache is set to true, it will first check the cache for an existing blog post on the same topic. If a cached version is found, it will return that instead of generating new blog content, saving time and computational resources. This is very similar to how website cache works. Here, we are setting use cache to false to ensure every time when we run the workflow, a new blog post is generated. In the last step, use the pprintRunResponse function to display the output in the console. Now let's run the script to test the workflow. For the topic, let's use Apple iPad mini. If we review the log, there's a rate limit error from DuckDuckGo API. Because in the getSearchResults method, I set the max attempts to 3, it will call the method again after the first failure. In the second attempt, the API call was successful. The article list is then passed to the writer's agent to generate the blog post as shown in the console here. Very rarely do people use a terminal to launch an agent or workflow. Agno provides a beautiful UI called Agno Playground, which is what I used for the workflow demo earlier. To use workflows in Agno Playground, there are a couple things we need to modify. First, import the playground class and serve playground app function from Agno Playground. Next, comment out everything in the main routine and move SQLite workflow storage import to the top. Below the blog post generator class, create a blog post generator and a playground object. In the generator blog post object, instead using session ID to track the session, change it to workflow ID. And in the playground object creation, make sure you assign the workflow object to the workflow's parameter. And to launch the playground, call the serve playground app function with the module and app name. Now run the script to launch the playground server. Click the playground URL. In the playground UI, click the workflows tab and you should see the blog post generator workflow is available. Enter a topic and turn off use cache. Click run workflow to trigger the blog post generation. If you set up everything successfully, you should see a professionally writing blog post generated. And that concludes this Agno workflow tutorial. Hopefully you find the video useful. If there are any workflow ideas you have in mind and you would like me to cover, Leave them in the comments below. Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.